The live bind technique lets you see in real time how a joint's position affects your pose. You can see here in this demonstration, rotating the locator rotates my joint as expected. But when I translate the locator, we get immediate feedback of what the pose would look like if the joint were placed at that location. This method avoids the time-consuming traditional process of unbinding, repositioning, and rebinding joints, making testing much faster and more intuitive. So, how it works. The fancy term for this is an inverse parent space matrix, which is not as intimidating as it sounds because in simple terms, it's just a pivot changing rig. If you've ever used or set one up, it's a pivot changing rig applied to bind joints. You can see in this example that the setup is changing the pivot position of the cube. I'm gonna go into further detail uh, in the following chapter on how to set this up. But for now, I just wanted to show that I'm only using one math node and clever parenting. So the key is the entire rig shares the same translation or world space as the cube. Um, so we have the locator and the child of that is the inverse. I added a joint for um, a visual representation so that you can see how it stays at the origin, but when I rotate is when it, it's following along. Thus, this is how a pivot changing rig works. Um, this multiply divide node, because we're, we're multiplying our translations by negative one in all channels, is keeping the inverse node, the child, locked in place. Like here, I'm gonna go to three and you can see that our translate x for the inverse is negative three. All right, so the actual tutorial part. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using, um, we're gonna be working with the elbow because it's easier to work with because it's also a hinge, only rotates on one axis. All right, so to start, we want to create a locator um, then we need a, to group that locator, so with that selected and without moving it so that it's at the origin, I'm going to hit Control G to group. And then I'm going to deselect everything and hit Control G again to create an empty null. And this is going to be our inverse. So I'm gonna name this inverse and it's gonna be a child of our locator. So the locator, I'm just gonna rename to live bind locator. And the group, I'm gonna rename to live bind group freeze. And the purpose of this group above the locator is to keep the locator, um, th the translations of the locator zeroed out because the parent will always be the origin. So we're only gonna move the group freeze to place it, which allows the locator to keep clean, zeroed out transforms as well as the inverse, which is really important for this setup. Next, going back to the elbow, I want to snap this setup that we just made to the elbow. So we can do that a number of ways, but I'm going to parent constrain it. So I'm going to select the elbow and then select the group freeze. And in the parent constraint options, you want to make sure maintain offset is off because we want it to snap. So I'm gonna hit apply. And we can see now that the group freeze of our live bind rig is now perfectly aligned with our elbow. It's in the exact same translational space and in the exact same orientation. Everything matches nicely. Delete your parent constraint because we just used it to snap. And um, what I like to do is select a locator and increase the local scale to increase the display size. This does nothing but affects the display, so it's just visual. All right. Next, selecting the locator first and then the inverse node. Go into Windows 
and open up your node editor. I'm going to clear the graph and hit the add selected node to graph button, this little plus guy. Um, we don't need the shape, so I'm just going to move that to the side. Expand your locator and expand your inverse. And then I'm going to hit the tab key and start typing in multiply. And we want the first one, multiply divide. I'm going to expand that as well. Then connect the translation of your live by and locator into input one and connect the output of the multiply divide node into the inverse translate. And select your multiply divide node and set the input twos to negative one because we want to, we want whatever translation values that the locator has to be inversed, multiplied by negative one. It's simple math, but it's so effective because we can see here that even though the, the locator is now moved, like in the previous example, the inverse stays at the origin, which is set by the group freeze. It's, it's clever parenting when you think about it. All right, next step, we want to actually connect it to the bind skeleton. So I'm going to select the inverse and then select the elbow and parent constrain it. And it doesn't actually matter if we turn maintain offsets on or off because they're in, in the exact same space and orientation. So I'm just going to run it. Now, you can, now we can see that the joints move with our locator, which is what we want. Cool. So I'm going to quickly bind this. And here's a tip. When I'm, when I'm, experimenting with joint positions with this technique. I like to make the weighting very blocky. Blocky like this, where it's just a harsh value of one. And this is because I don't want to spend time smoothing it out just yet because I can just throw on a delta mush. And I get that smoothing out for free because I'm just experimenting. Um, none of this is final. All I care about is finding a good joint position. Let's say I like something like that. So the next step from here would be to go back into your bind. Um, well, this, this is where it gets interesting because I made my weighting blocky, so I don't really care about it. But if you have very polished weights and you care about it, at this step, you would want to save out your weights. Um, there are many different ways to do this. I like mGear's save weights tool, which is available for free. So I'm gonna quickly do that. But there, if you have your own method, of saving and importing weights, I would just use your favorite method. But for this tutorial, I'm using mGear. So I'm going to go to mGear skin and weights, export skin. I'm going to find somewhere like this. I'm just going to save this here. Save. Then once your skin cluster is saved, delete the history. You want to delete the skin cluster data, otherwise you can't move your joint. Um, so with the elbow selected, if you hit the insert key, you can move your joints without affecting the children, which is a very handy trick. So I'm gonna then, while pressing the V key and the middle mouse button drag, snap it to the locator. Um, this is also important. We want to delete the parent constraint because we're done with that part of the rig. So with the joints newly positioned, oh, another thing I should mention is when you're using the in insert tool to move your joints, it will not orient. You can see how I'm in object space and it didn't orient. And it breaks the orientation. Um, if you care about that, 
which for me, because it was such a small change, it's not really a big deal. But if yours is messing up your skeleton, you can just quickly throw on a orient joint uh, while your skin is unbound. All right, going back to the tutorial. We're gonna rebind our skin and taking a look at it now, that's the default skin weighting. We're gonna re-import the weights that we had saved. So mgear skin and weights import skin. Select the file you had exported and it should be as simple as that. Yeah, there it is. That's the blocky weighting we did. Cool, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, thank you. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, as a bonus, I'm going to talk about theory, joint position theory, and why it matters. Um, so if you're an animator and you've animated finger controls, you might have gotten something like this on the screen where you can't really get that tight curl that you'd see if you were to, looking at your own hand as an example, when you bend your fingers, which would which should look something more like this, you know, that tight curl. Um, maybe if you are an animator and you, you do get this pose, you'd have to rotate and then translate, which I think is inefficient. The rig should work just off of the rotations alone because we want to set up our animators to win. Um, so that's that was the whole idea of this live bind technique to find these joint positions where they rotate nicely. This is also what I like to call the swing of the joint position because we're looking at how the appendage elongates or compresses into the pose. Um, we're not really looking at the, the deformation parts. We're just looking at the arc, the swing, because the deformation can always be fixed with a blend shape or a corrective joint. But the swing and the arc of the joints you're, you're pretty much stuck with whatever your joint position is because it's purely rotation, right? Here's another example from an unnamed, unreleased project that was canceled um, where the red position is what the creature originally had and the green is what I had recommended after review of the rig. Um, and like I said before, the animator can just can get this pose from just rotating instead of rotating and translating. And if we compare the two, green just feels like a much stronger pose. It feels like if you were to rotate the hind leg back, it, it just feels more natural and more elongated. There's a lot of strength in it versus red. Special shout out to my friend Frank Abney III, which he doesn't have on his website. He's a very accomplished animator and he invited me to work on his short film Canvas, which is available on Netflix, that he wrote and directed himself. Um, the reason why we're thanking him is because the model I had used for this tutorial was the grandpa character's arm. So if you've got time, or if you're on Netflix and you're unsure of what you wanna watch next, I would hope you check out the short that we had worked on. It was a passion project of his. Um, but yeah, thank, I'd like to thank you as well for watching this video. I hope you found value in this tutorial and learned something new. All right. Goodbye.